today I am going to tell you about the books that I have planned for the Booktube Spin. Booktube Spin number three is upon us, everyone. According to Rick McDonnell, who created the Booktube Spin, this is the third time for it, and actually the first time that I've had my act together to actually have a list of books in a video. The first time I skipped the Booktube Spin been because I guess I wasn't aware of it because at the time I was pretty unsettled still um, you know how my life's been for the last year but the second time I found out about it in time to make a list but not in time to make a video with my list well this is the third time this time I am making a video with my list so I'm kind of excited about that and the last time I did have a list so uh, the booktube spin landed on number one, and my number one book was The White Stag. I recently finished this book. I did not like it. It was about Attila the Hun. It was written in a very strange, grand, eloquent type of speech. I did not like this book at all. I did make a review of it over on Goodreads, and I will put the link to that in the video. Um, description on YouTube. Recently over on Goodreads I started a group called California Reading because I'd like to focus my reading more on California um, for a while. I don't know how long. As long as it feels good to me I guess. Here's my list of 20 books for the booktube spin. Rick will be doing the spin in a day or two and whatever number he lands on will correspond with one book on my list and that is the book that I will be reading within the next two months. So um, the first three books are fiction and the last 17 are non-fiction. Uh, eight of them are memoirs at least. Four of them are Native American books and Five are just general nonfiction, so let's get on with the three that are fiction. I have chosen book number one. How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Zhang, published in 2020, 288 pages. It's set in San Francisco, I believe, or at least California. I really don't know where it's set, to be honest, but... I am assuming California. Okay, the second one has got to be California because it's called California Gold by John Jakes, published in 2001, 678 pages. Book number three, There, There by Tommy Orange, published 2018, 304 pages. It is about 12 Native Americans coming together for a powwow in Oakland, California, which is where I was born, so I really would like to read this book. Now the eight memoirs. The first one is On Gold Mountain, The 100-Year Odyssey of My Chinese-American Family by Lisa C., published 1996, 448 pages. I read a book by Lisa C. last year, loved it, it was one of my favorite of the year, so I hope that I will like On, Go On Gold Mountain, it would be nice if that was picked. Um, book number five, My First Summer in the Sierra by John Muir, published 1911, 160 pages. Book number six. At Berkeley in the 60s, The Making of an Activist by Joe Freeman, and that was published 2003, and it is 384 pages. I used to live in the San Francisco East Bay area when I was a teenager and spent a lot of time in Berkeley hanging out on Telegraph Avenue in the 60s. Uh, so I would like to know what this book says. Book number seven, Lettuce Wars, Then Years of Work and Struggle 
In the Fields of California by Bruce Newberger. Published in 2013, 350 pages. I kind of would like to know about his experience being a field worker. Book number eight is Alta California from San Diego to San Francisco, A Journey on Foot to Rediscover the Golden State by Nick Neely, published 2019, 432 pages. I love travel memoirs of all kinds, so I would very much like to read this one. Book number nine, Epitaph for a Peach, Four Seasons on My Family Farm by David Mas Masumoto. Published in 1995, 256 pages, another agricultural memoir. Book number 10, Reign of Gold by Victor Villasenor. Published in 1991, 576 pages. Um, I think this is about his mother's family or his father's family. I'm not sure which one, and I'm pretty sure it takes place in Southern California. Book number 11, Swallow the Ocean by Laura M. Flynn. Published 2008, 304 pages, and this one is set in San Francisco, and it is about Laura's mother, who is schizophrenic. Now, four books about Native Americans. The first one is To the American Indian Reminiscence, Reminiscence? of a Yurok Woman by Lucy Thompson, published 1991, 292 pages. I have to tell you these four books are all about tribes that are in the area where I now live. Where I now live, it is the Karuk Ancestral Territory, and the Karuk means uh, upriver people, that's what their name means, and then a little downriver, there's the downriver people, and that's the Yurok's. So that first book to the American Indian was about a Yurok woman, and the second one is, uh, well it's book number 13 on my list, Karuk the Upriver People by Maureen Bell, published 1991, 144 pages, and of all the books on this list, this is the only one I currently own. If any of the other books get picked, I will have to go out and buy it. So, book number 14, Arara Pikva. Traditional Karuk Indian Literature from Northwestern California by Julian Lang. Published 1993, 112 pages. I've actually met this man, Julian Lang. Uh, I met him at the Karuk Tribal Reunion. And I believe he lives over on the coast near Eureka somewhere. Book number 15, Cam Tim, A Journey Toward Healing by Keishan Laura Cooper and Walter J. Laura Sr. Published 2019, 356 pages. I believe this is also about downriver people. I don't know if they're Karuk or Hoopa or Yurok, I just don't know. Next, five general nonfiction books. The first one that attracted my attention was book number 16 on my list, The Library Book by Susan Orlean. Published 2018, 317 pages. This one is about uh, the Los Angeles Library burning down. Book number 17 on my list, Flood Path, The Deadliest Man-Made Disaster of the 20th Century America and the Making of Modern Los Angeles by John Wilkman, published 2016, 336 pages. Book number 18 on my list is Season of the Witch, Enchantment, Terror, and Deliverance in the City of Love by David Talbot, published 2012, 480 pages. I normally do not read books with the word witch in the title. <laughs> to me that says fantasy or horror or something, And but this one is actually a history of San Francisco 
between like the late 60s, 1967 into the 1980s. And I was sort of, um, I lived in San Francisco during that time and I'm very interested in the history. So I'm going to read it if this one is chosen in the booktube spin. And book number 19 on my list, The Bohemians. Mark Twain and the San Francisco Writers Who Reinvented American Literature by Ben Tarnoff. Published 2015, 336 pages. The last one on my list is book number 20, The Barbary Coast by Herbert Asbury. 1933 is when that was published. It is 318 pages. I actually had a copy of that and read part of it uh, a while back. My copy burned in the fire. Sorry to say. So I will buy another copy and finish reading it if that one is chosen in the booktube spin. So that's my 20 books. Looking forward to the spin and talk to you in another video.